Welcome! In this video I'm going to show you how you can determine the number of bins needed or the and suggestion of what could be used. Uh, of course you can also try out a few different uh, number of bins and see what works uh, best. Um, these are the simple uh, rules, there are a few more complicated ones um, that use an algorithm to minimize a cost function or optimize a profit function, but these are the basic ones. Um, there are quite a few actually, so this is going to take a little while. Uh, most of them rely on the sample size. I have my data in column A, so my sample size can simply be count A. Alright, the first one that we're going to have a look at is the square root choice. Uh, its formula is over here, it's simply the square root of the sample size and these strange looking brackets indicate a ceiling function which in essence means to round up. So we're going to round up the square root out of that sample size which is in F4 and we don't need any decimals. I'm using a semicolon system, so uh, to separate parameters you might be using a comma, so then have a look if the semicolon doesn't work, use the comma. Um, and I don't want to see any decimals, so close that. So the square root choice would suggest to use 45 bins. Sturgis has a different approach, he says to take the second log of n uh, and then add one, so we can say equals again round up the log function is in Excel uh, the number of scores that we have is in F4 the base is 2 and then we add one uh, oh we need to of course say that we don't want to see any decimals add one and we get 12 so that's quite a big difference but okay the quartic root was cited in uh, Lohaka, who did a whole dissertation on this topic. Um, it's 2.5 times. To, uh, of course, we're going to round up again. Round up 2.5 times. The quartic root. Now, uh, Excel doesn't have a quartic root function, but uh, a quartic root is the same as something to the power of a quarter. So we can use the sample size to the power of... Uh, a quarter, 0 0.25 if you will, and then we don't want to see any decimals. Close it, and we get 17. Rice had a different approach, two times the cubic root of n, so again, a round up, two times the cubic root, well that's the same as the sample size, which was in F4 to the power of a third, and we don't want to see any decimals, so he suggests to use 26. We have Terrell and Scott, who say the cubic root of 2 times n, so very similar to Rice, slightly different though. Uh, so here we say round up, and then we do a new set of parentheses, 2 times f4, our sample size, raised to the power of, between parentheses, uh, sorry, f not f4, a third, uh, close it, and then we say that we don't want to see any decimals, so that's also 16. Alright, um, the exponential is also cited in Lohaka, uh, which is uh, very similar to our Sturgis, but doesn't have the plus 1, so we could actually just do Sturgis minus 1, but alright, let's do the whole thing, round up, and then we say log of f4, base is 2, and we don't want to see any decimals. So indeed that's 11, as predicted, 12 minus 1 equals 11. Philemon has a, a slightly more complex looking, but it's not so difficult, it's just an if. If the sample size is less than or equal to 100, we use this one, and otherwise we use um, the 10 times the log 10n. So, yeah, 2 times the square root of n, that is, uh, it looks a bit like the, the rise one, but 1 cube higher, um, 1 root higher, sorry. So we can use an if, uh, so we're going to round up, and then we say, well, if my sample size is less than or equal to 100, then it's going to be 2 times the square root out of the sample size. And if it's not less than 100, then we're going to use 10 times 
the log there's a log 10 function even uh, of uh, n so that's f4 uh, so now I can also close my if and say that I don't want to see any decimals so that's 33 Duane has an uh, even more scarier one because it uses a um, skewness, which is defined like this. Um, but luckily, um, Excel has a skewness function. And notice, by the way, it's using the skewness of the population. So skew.p is the one that we need. And of column A. Um, it also then has the standard deviation of that skewness. So that's this formula. And we can actually simply just follow that along. So it's going to be the square root out of 6 times. And then there's an n minus 2. So f4 is my n minus 2. And it's just a sample size divided by two sets of parentheses. f4 uh, plus 1 multiplied by... And then we get f4 uh, plus 3. Close the double set of parentheses, close the square root, and that should give us our skewness. Then finally, Duane says that the number of bins is 1 plus the second log of n plus the log of n of 1 plus that skewness divided by the uh, standard deviation of that skewness. And these straight lines, actually pipes I think they're called, uh, indicate the absolute value, so ignore a negative sign if it's there. So we can do equals round up, and then we say 1 plus log 2, so log and then uh, f4 base 2, plus log and then 1 plus the absolute value of my skewness, divided by that standard deviation of the skewness, and that's going to be a base 2. And then we also close the, uh, we need to select the number of digits, so that's going to be 0, and close the round up, and we get 15 as a result by Duane. Alright, uh, we're getting there. Uh, there is also Scott Rule, who takes the standard deviation, luckily the sample version, so standard def, and luckily I wanted to say Excel has a standard deviation function for us. We then calculate the width, because actually Scott only gives a calculation for the width of the bars, uh, of the bins. And that's set to 3.49 times that standard deviation, divided by, and then the cubic root of our sample size. So again, to the power of a third should give us that result. Now we can determine the minimum of all our data, min of A and also the maximum of A and then we can use this small formula to say well we're just going to take the range the maximum minus the minimum divided by the width of the bins and that should give us a fairly good idea of how many bins we need so round up and then we're going to say well it's going to be the maximum minus the minimum divided by my h, the bin width, and I don't want to see any digits, so 15 also. Alright, the last one I want to discuss is Friedman and Diaconis. They, um, instead of using a normal range, they use the quartile, interquartile range, which uses quartiles. Excel luckily has again a function for quartiles. It has two actually, the, oh, the quartile excluding and including I'm going to use the included one um, column A and I want the first quartile I can actually copy paste this because um, I also want to see the and just change it to the third and the interquartile range is then simply the difference between the third quartile minus the first one as bin widths uh, Friedman and uh, Diaconis then say, well, it's two times that interquartile range, also divided by the cube root of n. So we can say that's going to be two times that interquartile range, that was over here, divided by, and then 
let's use a set of parentheses f uh, 4 to the power of 1 over 3 close all the parentheses and we have ourselves our bin widths for the number of bins we can then use actually the same formula as we saw earlier for Scott uh, but then of course I use it slightly different I'm gonna select everything and then paste it here uh, uh, but instead of using the bin widths from Scott of course we're gonna use the bin width from Friedman Diaconis and that comes up with 16 alright so those are a lot of different ways that you can calculate um, a number of bins um, I made actually my own user defined little function that can calculate uh, all of the different ones uh, in one go for me um, I leave a link to this uh, Excel file in on my website and a link to my website in the description below I hope this was helpful and um, thank you for watching